This is Ryan Forbes and I work for the Natural Resource Conservation Service and today we're going to be talking about my favorite conservation practice 382 conservation practice standard fence and with this we're, what we're going to talk about are some things that what a district conservationist or planner is going to come out and look at how you construct your fence today. So the first thing we want to talk about this morning is the wire, the actual barbed wire. Okay, it needs to be double strand, 12 and a half gauge. And if you look really close here, it should have two point barbs, four to six inches. And this, this barb should be right around 14 gauge. The wire should also be double wrapped. It's recommended that we double wrap the wire. As you can see on this fence post here, it's coming around here. And uh, reason for that is that when you are using your stretcher, and you're pulling your wire tight, there's a bunch of contact points here with the, the barbed wire. So once you double wrap your wire, you're gonna have enough length, and when you release your stretcher, it's not gonna go back as far and your fence is gonna remain tighter. So that's the reason to double wrap your wire, and that's what we recommend through our specifications. Corners, what you want is a minimum of seven foot H brace, as you can see, this one from here to here is eight foot. So that exceeds the seven foot standard and that's inside to inside is what you want is seven foot. This post should be a green treat or some type of treatment on it as well. And it should be a diameter at least four, four inches with that particular post there. Uh, the wire, the gauge wire running here is number nine wire. And the angle of that wire should come up and pull that post that's going to the direction of the pole of the fence. So that keeps the fence tight this way. And you can have two uh, wires, number nine wires going if as well, if that's what you desire. And make sure that you um, staple both of these wires down here. And then obviously around the, the, the barbed wire as well when you staple in the wire. Corner braces need to be a minimum diameter of five inches and seven foot is what you need to have for total. And they should be some type of a, a green treat preservative. Uh, if you, they should be fairly sound in uh, straightness and everything. Line post, they need to be a minimum of five foot steel post and have notches on them. The thing that we don't, do not want to see is something like this. We want the fence to be of high quality and long lasting durability, okay? so. Uh, if it's bent like this and there's no anchor plate on them, that's exactly what we don't want for our fence. Our spacing, when it comes to a general purpose fence that we're discussing, is right around 20 foot. So the district conservationists might have a wheel, they might have a, a clicker, they might have a tape measure, but what they're going to do is they're going to wheel the length of your fence and do an average spacing. And for a general purpose fence, you're gonna be right around 20 foot. If you use a wire stay, you can go up to 30 foot. Uh, the stay should be put equally in the middle of the post. The wire height should be anywhere on a three to four barb fence. Uh, typically it's about 42 to about 48 inches. So if we measure this fence here, it's probably gonna be right around just a shade shy of 48, 47 inches, somewhere in there and typically they're about 42 to about 48 inches. On a three barbed fence, you're gonna be right around, right around 42 inches is kind of what you're gonna to wanna to be. Obviously, if you have more wires, this wire is gonna be a little bit taller and you're gonna to have to spread these out equally. You're gonna to wanna to definitely make sure you keep the wires out of the grass. What I like to see is that bottom wire just a little bit below my kneecap, which is roughly about 16 inches to 17 inches. When it comes to fasteners, they should uh, fit your post. So you gotta have these notches on, on your T-post and have these fasteners like this and make sure they're equally on there. Make sure you bend the wire right around and so the wire doesn't move or is unable to be pulled off there. Uh, staples should be uh, number nine gauge wire staple, anywhere from inch and a quarter to inch and a half in length. Uh, try to drive those at an angle. In the fence line, you're gonna to wanna to leave these not driven all the way into the wood posts. And two reasons for that is, it, number one, it's gonna make a contact point with your wire. Once you drive this in here, it's gonna weaken the wire and you could hit it with a hammer. The other thing is, 
when the fence needs maintenance and you want to stretch it, if this is driven all the way in, you're not going to be able to stretch the wire tight because it's going to pull out. For an uh, inline post, wood post, because there will be producers that will put wood posts, every third post will be wood or something like that, they need to be a minimum of three inches in diameter and a minimum of six foot. That is the, the height requirement for an inline fence post. These H braces need to be at all corners, at all angle turns, in anything greater than 15 degrees. That's the requirement where these H braces need to be. Definitely would recommend before you uh, install this practice that you have your job sheet, your specification sheet, and the job design plan so you know how to install the fence and what the material is. Because if these, everything that I just listed here are the bare minimums to be able to construct a general purpose fence. And that's how NRCS is gonna look at it when the, when the district conservationist comes out and certifies off on your fence uh, and how they can make that payment for that particular practice. So what a district conservationist is gonna do when they come out to check off your fence, the first place that they're probably gonna start is right around a corner or an H brace. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna take a look at this first post and they're gonna measure the diameter of that they're going to notice if the, if the post looks straight, if it's of sound quality material of a post that's going to last, you know, 15 to 20 years, something like that. In this particular one, it definitely has our diameter of uh, five, five inches. Uh, these posts need to be a minimum of seven foot is the minimum. So there should be at least two to two and a half foot into the ground um, with this particular post. The other thing that they're going to take a look at on a corner is your H brace here and that needs to be a minimum of seven foot. This one here comes all the way across at eight foot so we have more than enough distance from, center, for, from the inside corner to inside corner to make that measurement there. They're also going to look at the way that you wrap the wire. It's recommended that this is double wrapped and the staples are driven in here to hold that wire tight as well. So the, the number nine wire you'll see the direction of pull uh, it's a matter of physics. This, the, the fence is going this direction, so all the wire is pulling on that post. So we want the bottom of this post to hold the top of that post this way. So it's just trying to hold it, the, the force that the fence is delivering to the H brace to keep it on there and keep that post straight. And a lot of people, they might do a double wire, number nine wire, which is fine as well. Uh, but there needs to be a minimum of one in here. Okay, so once we have uh, checked out our H brace, the next step that we're going to do is take a look at our inline fence and the distance with the posts. The first thing you're going to look at, the planner or district conservationist, you're going to look at their T posts. Are they good quality? Do they have the paint on them? Are they straight? Uh, are they going to last 15 to 20 years? That's, that's the biggest thing with these type of posts. Uh, are they the right gauge of fence? Fasteners, do they look appropriate for the post as well? And what they'll do is they'll take their tape, they'll measure from the ground, and making sure that we have a minimum of 42 inches for our three wire fence, and we could be all the way up to 48 for a four wire fence, but that is at equal spacing all the way down through the ground. So that's that's how the what they're gonna look at. They're gonna measure, they might take a wheel. They might step it off, but ultimately they're going to figure out the distance between these, these posts and then average it together. And for a general purpose fence that we're describing here this morning, you need to have 20 foot. Unless you use a stay that goes in the middle, you can go up to 30 foot between posts. Hopefully you found this video helpful this morning as we were checking out this conservation practice fence. And also remember to have your job sheet and your job drawings uh, out in the field with you. And if you're not sure on how to install it with the proper material, um, ask. Please ask your local NRCS official, district conservationist, soil conservationist, the material that I'm gonna use, show them. If it's in the back end of your pickup, show them what you're gonna use so they can understand what you're gonna use and it's going to meet our specifications before you go to all this work and put this in and we have to change something. So having a pre-construction meeting is vital to, to the success of this conservation practice. 
And just always remember, good fences make good neighbors. Thank you for watching.